So, um, I'm, as I said, I'm director of business development. I'm, I'm in charge of basically helping get these ideas and concepts from inside the classroom to outside into the real world. And uh, my counterpart is, is Joe Meppelink, and he's more on the applied research side. Um, what we're doing at the University of Houston is basically we're trying to commercialize green technology. And we do that by seed funding um, different research projects in the form of public-private partnerships. And the goal is to hopefully take these uh, ideas uh, from a seed stage, uh, bring them into a prototype, and then from there into early stages of commercialization. And I'll show you several examples of how that's happening. So this is our mission statement. It's basically um, to, to build green technology in, in the architecture environment. And we're operating under the College of Architecture. This is basically how, how the program looks. We seed fund projects in the range of $30,000 per project. And these are usually structured as public-private partnerships, meaning there's a UH researcher involved, some students, and then there's usually a private sector industry partner that's helping to take this um, further on. Um, the goal is to, at the end of the day, to build a prototype. So you can think of us almost as an incubator in, in the sense of a traditional technology incubator, except that we're building tangible products. And um, we're trying to turn these into eventually um, profit-making businesses. What we're looking for is basically uh, an innovative idea in the realm of sustainability. Um, it should be having something to do with the built environment, which is pretty broadly defined, as you can see from the different projects I'm going to show you. Um, it's going to be led by a design professional, involve some UH students, and have a private sector partner. So this is hard to see. But basically, the process is uh, fairly simple. We issue a proposal, a request for proposals. We get some submissions. We have a selection committee that decides who receives a grant. Uh, the grant money is given, and then the goal is to make a prototype. And then that prototype and all the different projects that we seed funded are displayed at the expo, which I'll, I'll highlight later. Uh, this is our annual expo. It'll, it'll basically be our our showcase to the community of what different technologies we've been working on and the neat things that are going on here at the university. Um, so with that, let's go into the different projects and uh, see what we've been up to. The first is called ReCompute, and ReCompute is a, a computer workstation that's completely made out of, or the shell at least, is made out of corrugated cardboard. And the idea with ReCompute is uh, basically to introduce sustainability into every uh, phase of the product life cycle, from manufacturing to usage uh, to disposal. And they do that by making the manufacturing process as simple as possible, reducing the waste, uh, making the usage as customizable as possible and flexible, so when you need to add things, it's easy to get inside and add things and um, upgrade. And then with disposal, of course, being made out of cardboard, it's very easy to, to dispose of, completely recyclable as well. Um, Recompute has been featured in a lot of, uh, of publications. It's been in some popular uh, online tech blogs, and uh, they're well on their way to commercialization. It's, uh, I think they were featured on Fast Company magazine a little while back. Uh, PowerLots is a, another project. It's they're developing a solar-powered canopy parking system. Um, the, it's not only solar-powered, so it's uh, putting electricity back into the grid. It's also harvesting rainwater uh, to use for sprinkler systems. And this is being uh, done in collaboration with several industry partners, including NRG, who is going to install one of their EVgo electric car charging stations. And the first project is uh, slated to be developed at the University of Houston's College of Architecture, which is right there in the background. The next project is SPACE, which stands for Solar Powered Adaptive Container for Everyone. And SPACE is uh, essentially a, uh, a container ship box that's been retrofitted inside to become a mobile office. 
and uh, in the back they've they put battery packs and on the top they designed a proprietary rack uh, with solar panels that folds out um, with the rack and the batteries space can last five days without any sunlight and it's basically being used primarily for disaster relief uh, that's what space looks like um, in the real world. It's uh, well on its way to commercialization as well. The city of Houston just purchased 17 space units. Uh, these are fully mobile. They can be put on the back of a trailer and driven anywhere uh, for hurricane response disaster relief workers to work out of. Um, and they can basically power uh, AC inside, um, computers, cell phones, whatever you need, and they're completely off the grid. This was a uh, space being unveiled at, at City Hall. You see Mayor Parker there and, and Laura Spangen, the Director of Sustainability. And so um, this was a big order for space. I think it was a $1.3 million order. PV Pod is a, uh, a solution to a, a big problem, uh, which is the cost of solar is very high. And um, the solution, uh, at least in part, is to lower the cost as much as possible. And they've done this here with regard to the mounting system. So solar mounts are traditionally very expensive. Uh, they're very heavy and they're difficult to install. They're made out of steel and they are um, weighted with concrete blocks. And so you not only have to haul concrete blocks onto your rooftop, and risk the roof warranty by dropping one and damaging it, but you also gotta be strong and know how to install them. So with PV Pod, um, the team basically took inspiration from basketball goal mounts in your driveway and said, why can't we develop a plastic vessel similar to what, what holds your basketball goal up? Uh, it's easy to carry. As you can see, it's designed to be able to carry it on your shoulder. Um, you can bring it up, it's 15 pounds when it's empty, fill it up with sand or water, and then mount the solar panel on top. And uh, that's what it looks like. So uh, it's easy to install. It's when, when built at scale, it's 50% cheaper than alternatives, and it's safe to your roof. So this was uh, one, of, one of PV Pod's first installations on the rooftop of the central permitting facility. And uh, this is right near downtown. You can see it in the background. And this is a pretty high profile location. There's a lookout deck right there. Um, so the city of Houston has purchased some of these units as well. And they are wind tested to uh, pretty much high speed winds, just the same as traditional solar mounts. The last, I believe this is the last project I'm highlighting, it's called GrowPod, and it's an above ground planting system, um, basically made out of a plastic vessel, um, and it, it comes with a soak hose. Basically, with GrowPod, it's like drag and drop gardening. Um, you, can, you can use this and start a garden anywhere you want, so it doesn't need to be really good soil anywhere. You can do these on amenity rooftops, and you can um, put these anywhere you want to start a garden. So it works really well for urban gardening, for community gardens, and um, it's pretty much a low cost version of what you would otherwise have to build yourself out of wood. And so this is uh, the grow pod at one of the community centers that it's being, it's being uh, developed here in Houston. And that's what it looks like with some, some wood trimming options that are available. So GrowPod is also um, being commercialized right now. It's for sale. And um, actually, GrowPod is, uh, we, we did a business plan collaboration with the, the executive MBA program at UH, and they wrote a full business plan for it as well. So um, as you can see, we've, we've had quite a few accomplishments. A lot of these projects have already uh, been on their way to commercialization. It's an exciting time for us. Um, we've got patents on quite a few of them as well, and we've won some awards. Uh, we've been lucky to have quite a few industry partners for each of these projects. They're, they're usually donating uh, materials and their time and expertise and helping a lot with the innovation that's going on here. And we're always looking for more. 
Um, like I said, we have our third annual expo uh, coming up in November 17th. Um, so you are all invited to come and, and check out these projects. They're going to be, most of them are going to have displays out there so you can, you can play with them or at least see them in real life. And uh, it's going to be at the College of Architecture in the atrium. Um, it's free, so no excuses for not coming. And there's always sponsorship opportunities available. So come see me or my colleague Elena if you're interested in that. So that is pretty much it. I know this is a short presentation, but um, if you have any questions, feel free to ask or check out our website. And um, we've got the displays here with some flyers. And that's about it. Thanks. <laughs> questions or no? No, I'm not. I'm a I'm business guy. My background is in banking and finance. So for, for the students' involvement, um, typically how many students are involved in one of these projects? Is it a semester long? I think the projects are usually a year long unless they get a commercialization grant, which is a follow-on grant, and then they can be extended another year. Um, and usually there's, I would say, two or three students per, per project, or sometimes more. Oh yeah, there's a, also a corresponding course that Joe teaches. He's a professor there. You had a question? Yeah, just, uh, actually, uh, I have a background in painting factory. Uh huh. And it seems like um, the program um, incorporates a lot of traditional industries and tries to accelerate it or modify it for the teachers. Like, um, as far as your students, do you encourage them? Uh -huh. And it's just a matter of, like a lot of people don't realize what kind of opportunity that for local businesses to get involved with it also. What would you recommend? Um, I would definitely recommend that any local business that wanted to get involved uh, reach out to either me or, or Joe or Elena. Um, we're, I think most of the things that are manufactured for these projects are manufactured locally. With, with the plastic stuff and the, um, the metal fabrication as well. So yeah, th we're definitely open to having more um, local businesses participate and students. Anything else? All right, well, if you, if you have any questions, feel free to, to contact me. There's my info. Um, there's, I can highlight some other projects if you're interested. I've got more. Oh yeah? <laughs> These are some of the newer ones. They're not as further developed as the ones I, I pointed out. So these will be some of the ones you'll see at this year's expo. Um, Botanica, I believe, is, uh, so I don't know as much about these as well because I wasn't prepared to go through all of these. But Botanica is basically a, a wall system that has plants and in, built into it and little mini fans and it's used to purify the air. And I believe one of the, the owners of Ruggles Green is, is involved in, in this project. So you can, you can find out a lot more about that at the expo and all of these. This is a prefabricated housing unit, I believe for emergency response as well. Sunstop is uh, in many ways similar to power lots. It's a solar powered car charging station. Um, the difference is that I think it can be applied in different uses. It's, it's made for third world countries and it's also used for convenience stores. And so it's more of a, a commercialization usage uh, in terms of, of a small businesses using these things. And um, dry dock is a, is a project being developed with Kirksey, an architecture firm. And it's basically gonna be used in Galveston for disaster relief to, I believe, elevate these houses above water when there's flooding. And this is a, a wall made out of cement. I don't know that much about this one, to be honest. It looks pretty cool.
Yes. You can, if you're interested, you should pick up one of these things. It'll give a much better explanation of the last couple than I did. But that's it. <laughs> Any other questions? Go ahead. Um, actually, I, so I finished my um, MBA, and, and uh, during that time I, fin I started a, a little startup here in town called CoFolio, and that's, uh, it was an investment platform for small businesses to reach out to local investors, and as a result of, of doing that for a little while and meeting people in the community, I met Joe, and I talked to him about um, if any of his projects needed investors, what would they do uh, to kind of take them from, you know, nice ideas and one-off prototypes to real businesses. And that's how I got involved. So. Well, I think that's that's always a big challenge for us in the program is is the bureaucracy of academia, and um, luckily we're a little more renegade and in spirit and in practice, and oftentimes we don't necessarily tell them what we're doing. <laughs> <laughs> like our website is is not as you can see here. It's not on the UH Central website, we just made our own. <laughs> so it, it's a combination of me and Joe kind of going off on our own and not telling people what we're doing. And, and then when we have to, um, just having to face up to that. Forgiveness instead of permission. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> definitely. It, it, they, I mean, this is, this is born out of the university and they definitely are big supporters of, of the program. And they, they like what we're doing. So you're, you're starting to, I mean, you sound like you've asked the question, sorry. Oh, no problem. <laughs> and a lot of it is about it. Um, as far as getting the word out about this, so now there's been some notoriety in you. You were able to get some VCs placed. You went to Charlie Green for working mm -hmm. with you from Houston. Um, what other relationships are you making with the community? And where do you see this going? I think that's a great question. It's, it's kind of been on our minds a lot. Um, we've kind of not been reaching out as much as we should have been. And so I think that's, that's what we're trying to do now by coming to things like this and, and speaking at different associations that are, are focused on renewable energy. And so that's kind of what we're doing to try to get engaged with the Houston, um, I guess, green community or alternative energy or environmental you know, associations and things like that. And we've definitely got a great relationship with the city of Houston and Laura Spangen and them. Um, and, and they've been really big advocates for our program as well. I don't think we've um, really reached out to as many as, uh, as we should, maybe just because um, we don't really have the, the inroads into many of those big companies. Um, but it's definitely an area that we're trying to explore. Um, all of the big energy companies have alternative energy arms, and it's definitely a priority for them, especially even if it's just an image thing um, and it makes up a small piece of their overall budget it makes a big difference to a small shop like this. So. All right, I think that's it. Well, it was nice meeting all of y'all. Come by and say hi.